because I thought I'd do something a bit different today and it's to do with my gaming setup and a few of you have been asking questions about how I've got all my consoles here basically hooked up to the TV simultaneously without having cables everywhere and having a crazy fire hazard and a, and a huge mess so I'm going to be installing this PlayStation Slim and you can see I've only just got it kind of temporarily hooked up here so to get it installed properly what I'm going to have to do is pull the whole cabinet forward and get behind there and sort it all out. But I thought that would be a perfect opportunity just to, to give you a quick tour and maybe answer some of your, your questions. So what I'll do now is I'll just pull this out and show you how it's all set up. So here's the view from behind the TV and you're probably thinking that's an absolute mess but it's actually reasonably well laid out and pretty organised. The main thing with this setup was I wanted it all to be contained within the one unit so if I ever did need to get back here to like uh, install a new console or just do some cleaning or whatever all I needed to do was unplug one cable and the whole thing would just slide out. So this is just a quick look at how it's set up. I'll go into more detail in a minute, but I'll just give you a quick idea. So I'll quickly go over how it's all hooked up to the power, and basically everything gets connected via this surge protector in the middle and the cool thing about that is I only need to plug in one plug to basically power everything on the entire entertainment system and before you start freaking out thinking my house is going to burn down or something it's not a problem because I usually only ever have like maybe one or two devices actually switched on and uh, powered up at one time so usually it'll be the TV and then maybe another another console or something and the other thing with this surge protector is you can actually isolate each circuit so that's just making it a bit safer again. And running from the, the power surge protector I've got other power strips and these are all bolted to the, the entertainment system so they can't move around. So I've got one down here, I've got another one down here and then I've got two at the end here but I'll get to that in a minute. So across here I've got the PlayStation 2, the Wii, the Dreamcast and then the Saturn that's their power supplies back there and down here I've got the 360 and the PlayStation 3 and then I've got the external hard drive for that JTAG unit and the HD DVD drive and then over here we've got um, the Sega console so we've got the 32X and the, the Mega CD and all them so I needed to get two power strips for that because you can't physically fit the, the power adapters on, on one strip and it looks really dangerous, it's not, it's perfectly safe before anyone starts commenting about how my house is going to burn down. It's, it's perfectly fine. I've also got the master system plugged in there and then the, the tiny media centre as well. So yeah, that's basically how it's all hooked up to the power. It doesn't look too safe, but it actually is very safe. I'm kind of paranoid about it fire hazards and stuff so yeah so moving on to the video cables and this is where it starts to kind of get a bit messy we've got 12 separate consoles here I think and they all need their own video cables hooked up to the TV and obviously the TV doesn't have that many inputs so you need to kind of get a bit creative and here I've got the Wii and the original Xbox they're running through um, component so there's only one set of component inputs on the TV. So what I did is I just bought a couple of these RCA splitters. You can get them on eBay for like a pound, two pounds or something. And uh, basically just split them into two sets. So I've got one for video and then one for, for audio. So if I want to play the Wii, the Wii's on the left side here. So I just put my hand behind the TV and switch these switches over. So I want to play the Xbox I just switch over to the Xbox. And that's the audio for the Xbox there. And that's how the uh, the Wii and the Xbox are hooked up. So the other consoles I've got, I've got the older consoles are all hooked up via RGB SCART. So again, there's only one RGB SCART input here. There's another SCART input back there, but that's for, um, I think that's just a regular RCA SCART socket. So I've only got one RGB SCART input on the TV. So I had to get a couple of these splitters and daisy chain them together. So here I've got the Sega Saturn um, 
PlayStation 2 Master System and the the whole um, 32x Mega Drive Mega CD setup here as well. And then there's one more that I've got for the the Dreamcast, and that's not hooked up right now. But I the other end of it's down there. So if I ever want to play a game on the Dreamcast that doesn't support VGA, because there are a few, I can just hook up that connector there and uh, switch it over here. But these are all individually switched as well. So if I want to play like the the PlayStation 2, I just push that down and that's now connected up to the, the TV. But uh, yeah, that's how ba basically how I've got the uh, the older consoles hooked up there. The newer consoles like the likes of the uh, 360 and the, the PlayStation, they just connect up via the, the HDMI, so that's not really a, a big deal. The Dreamcast is hooked up via the VGA cable like I mentioned there. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it for the, the video cables, but as you can see, the video cables are, are probably what caused the, the most mess. So finally I'll just quickly mention how I've got all the cables kind of tidied and routed here. And I like to use a combination of regular zip ties, like these, and reusable Velcro cable tidies. And you can pick these up really cheap. I've got a pack of 12 here for... I think it was a pound and really useful things to have they can you can fit tons of cable between them and then you can actually wrap them around the, the entertainment system itself so you can see here I've got kind of wiring loom going up the, the side there and then running across here um, just really useful things to have you can see I've also even made use of a <laughs> an old Xbox 360 X clamp there I just screwed that into the the entertainment system there bent the, the legs over and that does a good job of supporting the weight of this wiring limb. But yeah, it looks a bit of a mess but it's actually pretty um, organised. You can see I've got my ethernet cables down here and usually I've got my uh, wireless router sitting in there. It runs off a separate power supply from everything else so uh, yeah that sits in there. And that's for the TV, that's for the 360 and that's for the regular Xbox. So. That's all back there. And with the likes of these, these are just attached to the back of the TV using some um, Velcro or hook and loop, if you want to call it that. Buy this in sheets for, for hardly any money. And then just cut it to the size you want and then stick it to the back of your TV. And that'll just peel off if you want to uh, adjust anything in the future as well, which is kind of handy. But yeah, that's just a quick look at how I've got my uh, gaming setup uh, all connected here and I know a few of you have been asking some questions about it so hopefully that's them answered now but yeah thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon